It's who I am. Get used to it. Fear the assassin with no master. Try to keep up. Quick and deadly. Feel me now? Oh, you're gonna bleed. Let's have some fun. What is up guys? Welcome back. We are playing Akali today and of course also using her newest Star Guardian skin. So Akali is an AP assassin, pretty hard to pick up and master as well. So it's a champion you have to put in a lot of games into. You start off with your Q, so that's like damage in a cone in front of you. And your passive is basically so when you damage an enemy champion with an ability then you will get like this ring around them and if you exit that ring then you can pick up an empowered auto attack that's going to like give you bonus auto attack range and also deal more damage. Now if you look at the early game like your Q cost 130 energy and you have 200 energy at this point so you can only use one Q and then you had to wait a while before you can use it again so the early game is absolutely awful. You're not looking to fight at all in the early stages, you just want to try to like use it to last it with, and you will also get poked down a lot. So we are starting off with the Dawn Shield, and then we are also running sustain runes in the result tree with the second wind. That should give us a decent amount of sustain so you can hopefully, you know, survive the early landing phase against those ranged matchups. And the W is a shroud that you can place and if you are standing inside that shroud you are going to become invisible. And when you attack stuff then you will be visible for a short duration before you go invisible again. And this shroud also gives you instant energy while also increasing your maximum energy. So like if you want to go all in the stuff or if you want to trade then make sure this W is up because it does give you a lot of energy that will allow you to you know, keep trading. Your E is say dash and backwards. And if you hit somebody with an E, it's going to mark them so you can recast your E, allowing you to dash towards that target. That's a fight going on in the jungle. And that is basically how that mark works, the E. You hit somebody with it, you can recast it and you're gonna follow them. Even if they flash away or if they TP or something, that E can still follow them all the way. So now that you are low 3, we have a double buff so that's pretty nice to have. But now that you are low 3, you can start trading a bit. Still into ranged matchups, do be careful though because like, they can kite you pretty well. Also. One thing a lot of people don't know is that your E and your W works well together. So if you place down the Shroud, you can also mark the Shroud with your E. So when you recast your E, you'll be dashing to the Shroud. So you can like do this to like get a quick trade off and then you dash back to safety. We start off with the boots here, especially important in the mid lane because you'll be playing against a lot of mages and other champions with skill shots so that's gonna help you like evade stuff and also give you that free flat magic pen and even if they have a lot of CC I would still go for the shock shoes just because we have double tenacity we have tenacity in the primary tree and in the secondary one as well so we already have a lot so anymore is not needed another fight starting in the river So unfortunately I messed up that E, but you can see like you hit an enemy champion with one ability then you need to exit that ring zone to pick up that empowered auto attack and then just keep going like this. We win the abilities with your auto attacks. Because that's going to like maximize your damage as well. Because if you don't get to use those empowered auto attacks you will be losing out on a lot of damage. And we want to push just drop down that W because it gives you instant energy so you can keep using your Q. Now your Q only costs 100 energy so you have enough energy to use two of these. If you are at full energy level. We have the ultimate up level 6. 
This is the point where you can start looking for kills. And you can only use this ultimate when an enemy champion is nearby because the first cast of this ultimate is targeted. So it's going to like make you dash over and the OP combo here is that with the first part of the ultimate you use your E to like animation cancel it. And to sort of like give you a guaranteed hit because you mark people with the E. So while they're getting marked then you can use the second part of your ultimate which is the executing one. That one is not targeted, so it's a skill shot. But the damage of the second part of your ultimate is based on their missing health. So obviously you're going to deal a lot more damage the lower HP they are, meaning that most of the time you want to save it onto used everything else. So you put them to as low as possible HP and then you come in with that second part of your ultimate and burst them down. Even though you can start looking for kills at this point, if you play against a very safe mid laner like the Lux for example, it can be pretty rough. Like find kills, so in that case you can just try to roam. Now, I have to be honest, a wave clang on Akali feels absolutely awful. Like it is so obnoxious trying to clear out waves for this champion, so if you're playing against someone who can like perma shove, like the Anivia or the Lux who just spams the ultimate on the wave, it's going to be very boring, no joke. It's going to be so boring. So you can either just show it and then just look for roams, because your roams become pretty strong when you hit level 6 and you have your ultimate up. You have access to a lot of mobility. So Kali is like a champion that goes in and out. Like when going all in, you don't just use everything at once because like all of your damage is delayed. First of all, you use your abilities, then you need to walk out to pick up the empowered auto attack and then your ultimate also has a delay to it. So it's a champion that constantly goes in and out of fights, despite being an assassin. So that's also why we have Conqueror because that helps with the all in. Well, that guy messed up, messed up that dash, so we'll take that free kill. Use that ultimate first, and then I saved the second part in case she had a flash or something to get over the wall with, because your abilities can be used to jump our walls, so you are actually pretty mobile. So the OP combo is basically that when you use the first part of your ults, then you immediately use the E. Because that's like an easy way to tag people because you'll be in melee range. And then you recast the E because it's like a guaranteed follow up into the second part of your ultimate. I can't really be trying all of these mechanics here just because I have 117 ping. It's pretty hard to pull this off when you have high ping but if you have normal ping then it should be pretty easy. And it also gives you a guaranteed way to hit your combos. Starting to build towards the rocket belt, but if they have a heavy tanky team composition, you don't pick a Kali. But if you have the first picker or blind picker, then you go into Rift Mega because that's going to help you a lot more into tankier team compositions when you have that true damage. The Lux got a shot down somehow topside, we'll keep pushing mid. Try to hit as many minions as possible with your Q, it does have a pretty short range and then use your W if you like want to push as fast as you can because you get that energy back. Like it just instantly gives you energy. Pushing for the plates. Now you can see our Q fully maxed out only costs 70 energy. So now is the point where you can get a bunch of Qs off without running, like without instantly running out of energy. So this is where she starts spiking when you have a fully maxed out Q. Makes it a lot easier to wake clear, but also a lot easier to go for good traits.
So we can keep the wave at this spot. When you trade guys, you have to keep in mind what they have to like disengage with. In this case, that is a Luxus Q. When she uses that Q, that's when you have a chance to all in or go for trades. That's something you have to do with every single champion. If you're playing against a Vagar, you would play around his cage, a brand against his Q, and so on. Whatever CC they have to like dodge, like to stop you in from engaging. I don't know what that flash was. Also, what's really cool about the skin here, guys, is that when you ping stuff, she has like different voice lines for the pings as well. It's pretty cool early on, but I have a feeling it's going to be annoying after a while, but it's a new age of skins where they also add voice line effects to the pings. We are just on a wave clang mission and then we just look for rooms because we cannot kill the slugs in the mid lane when she just stays at the tower and then perma spams ultimate on the minions too. These lanes are of course really boring to play so you can just roam around and see if you can find any kills somewhere. Once again the high mechanical the champion using the ultimate on the wave. And the entire wave is gone, so you can't really do anything about it. So you can just roam around. Maybe you can find the enemy jungler. If you can, then you can kill them most likely because you are hyper mobile. So uh, yeah, that was a bit end. I just wanted a kill because I did not get a kill for a while. It was getting pretty boring in the mid lane so I just soloed it and traded one for not really worth it because I had a 700 gold shot down. But you can see that it's pretty hard to get away from Akali. Because you have three mobility spells. And how can people escape that? Even if they flash over the walls you will still be able to follow up. But when you're all in, you also want to make sure that you are using the passive, the empowered auto attacks, because if you don't, you will be losing out on a lot of damage. Also worth to mention is the fact that Akali deals hybrid damage. Even if people are stacking full magic resistance, it's not going to counter you completely. Like it is still going to lower your damage by quite a bit, but you still have some physical damage in your kit. And do not underestimate the damage you get with your E. They actually, like with the latest changes they did to Akali, they did it so a lot of the damage is in the second part of your E. Like the E, like the second part when you attack somebody and then you're dashing towards them, that part of the damage that will hit like a nuke so really do make sure that you highly prioritize trying to hit that e because the scaling on that ability is insane and the base damage as well so you have to make sure that you actually hit that Also, if you see somebody trying to TP in the mid lane, you mark them with that E, and then when they TP, then you can, you can of course follow them across the map. But before you do that, of course, look to the lane they are TPing to and see if they are in a advantage position for you. Like, if it's in a very bad spot, like your entire team is getting destroyed, then of course you do not want to dash in there, because then you probably just end up getting killed. And a free kill on the Rengar as well. You can see if you use your Q guys and then use the first part of your ultimate. The dash is going to make it so you exit the circle zone. So you automatically pick up that empowered auto attack. Shut down. 
We don't really have anything for the locks, so if she hits us with one Q, we just die. So let's just peace out. We already got one kill, and we have that double magic pen built, and now we will start building even more magic pen with a shadow flame. I am just getting some HP instead of the Amp Tome just because we already have a lot of damage but we also want some tankiness so we don't get one shot the moment we get hit by a CC. And then we will just continue into the side lane because otherwise you just end up falling behind slowly even though you have the lead. Side lane you can like force fights 1 vs 1, 1 vs 2 and also get CS and XP for yourself. just push it out it can be pretty hit uh, pretty difficult to hit the entire wave with your Qs so you can use this ability with indicators on because then it shows the range and then you can be sure that you hit as many minions as possible but remember a lot of your damage is in that E as well the second part of it so make sure for the maximum DPS you actually hit that one. If you don't, then a lot of damage will be gone. Now if you're really far ahead then of course it's not going to hurt that much but if you are even or like in an all-in fight where it's really close then not hitting that E is going to hurt and rip to me but we also got a kill on the way so it's okay. That was like one second or something and then I could have dashed to the other side of the wall and escaped but that ability was not cooldown so rip Ronis. And rip to the Kaiser as well. But we are getting pretty fat and that's all that matters. She's an assassin so you want to prioritize getting kills on this champ. It is not a champion where you get high CS per minute. There is no Akali player even among the best Akali players in the world that has high CS per minute because you just can't. The way clear is so bad. And she's an AP assassin so your main goal is to look for kills, you find the kills early on, you snowball and you end the game before you get outskilled. You can see that E also it's going to place you outside that circle zone so you can pick up that empowered auto attack allowing us to get a free kill on the Rengar. Let's keep pushing it top side. They got everything under control with the drake, so we just keep pushing it out. It's a lot easier to play Akali from level 9 and onwards. Level 9 is the point where you get to max out the Q and the energy cost is going to be really low as well. And that's why you can honestly start spamming it a lot more because like level 1. And in the early game like 1 Q and you're out of energy. So you have to be like really good at not getting poked down too much in the early game and just wait until you're skilled up at level 9 and in the mid game and then you start looking for kills. That's a fight starting top side so let's get in there. Well I did not want to flash but looked like we had no choice. So we'll take the kill. And just use that ultimate to dodge that Q as well because otherwise I think we would have died to that Lux Salts because she's pretty fat as well. Just getting insta exhausted. If you have your W up guys that is true invisibility meaning that control wards will not reveal you. They will not reveal you but the sweeper the red sweeper also won't reveal you but they can see your positioning with it. Just be careful that while you're inside the shroud and you're invisible, 
if you hit an enemy champion, you will be invisible for short duration and during that time they can trade back. We got the shadow flame, now you build towards the Sonyas. You are an assassin so you want to get into the backline and assassinate the mage and the AD carry. So after you did that, you had to make sure you are able to survive and that's where the Sonyas hourglass comes in. Taking out the monster camps is also a struggle in the early game if you are not fed. So honestly, while I do that a lot on mages and other champs, I don't do that as often uh, on Akali. I just still do it sometimes when I have enough damage to clear out fast, but otherwise then no. Because it is going to take a while. A fight starting in the bot side, but Seth got that under control. We can just wait around here, popping the sweeper. So if somebody comes, then we can like walk in, dash in, get the kill and get out. No one came, we can go for the blue buff. Nice, of course that was a ward. And Lux using the high skill ability to steal away the blue buff as well. Okay, cool. It's not really that important on Akali, but it still feels nice to have the blue buff because like you get higher energy regen. So we should be able to go for the end here. We got to open the entire base almost, just missing the bot side. And then that should be done as well. And bam, picking up two kills, cleaning up, and we will go for the end, hopefully. For that second part of your ultimate, guys, remember it deals bonus damage based on missing health. You want the maximum amount of DPS, try to use it at the end. But if you already have enough damage to kill them and you just need a gap closer, then of course it's fine to just use it to get within range. And we will just go for the end here. Nothing else left to do. We got the entire base, so that is done. That is how you play Akali. I hope this was helpful. Thanks for watching as usual and see you all next time.